I love fonts. I love typography. In our little company, I'm the font guy that always says, that font's ugly. You know, let's change it. Um, they're, of course, you know, they're, they're the classic uh, core web fonts that Microsoft introduced over a decade ago that are the, you know, the eight that you see on every website, like Times New Roman, Verdana, Georgia, Comic Sans, although if you use Comic Sans, I will hunt you down and, and do bad things to you and your website, so or in your design, never use Comic Sans. Um, there, there are those eight that you see over and over and over again. And um, yeah, they're, everybody has them, but they're so boring and overused. And Times New Roman is a horrible font for the web. So the cool thing is now, thanks to CSS, the at font face, you can embed fonts from different sources and there's lots of great fonts out there. Google Web Fonts has got hundreds of free fonts, many of them that are really nice that you can embed in your website. So for instance, we did that on the zoo. On, on their redesign, we've embedded fonts that the designer picked in the site. Um, personal favorites, frankly, when I use a Mac and I always set everything to use Lucid to Grand, 16 uh, pixels or greater. I think Lucid to Grand is a really nice font. It's a very easy readable font. It's nice and wide, it's wide and open, so it's easy to read on the screen. My favorite uh, monospace font is Consolas, which is actually a Microsoft font that they started producing in, uh, that started being bundled with Office 2007. Um, it's a fantastic font because uh, when it comes to a monospace font for coding, you wanna make sure that it's readable, but you also wanna make sure that you can tell the difference between a zero and a capital O and a one and an I and an L and Consolas makes it really easy to do that. Um, in terms of my favorite serif font, serif fonts are nice. Um, again, the, the um, uh, Constantia, which was included with uh, Microsoft's uh, Office 2007 and up, is a very nice font. However, interestingly, I just read an article on the New York Times yesterday where they've done a study and the font that will cause people to believe your content is Baskerville. If you use Baskerville, people tend to accept the truth of what you're saying more than any other font. Oh, that is such good information. Isn't that inter interesting yes. information? So if you're creating a propaganda page, use Baskerville. Um, but personal favorite, uh, I have to say Lucida Grand. It's been around a while, but it's just a really easy, readable, great font. <laughs> my favorite right now is Calibri, which is on, uh, I always use it in my documents for Microsoft Word because I don't think it is, a, uh, I have something against Comic Sans. <laughs> it just, I just think if you do a website or something in Comic Sans, you're asking for trouble. And, um, but I think it looks nice and it's appealing to my eye. And I've used, you know, Arial and uh, oh, so many different ones, Roman, and, and it's, it's to me, it's my personal favorite, just in a gut instinct. My favorite typeface, probably, and this is going to sound really nerdy, <laughs> is. Uh, I think you pronounce it Verdana, mm -hmm. and I really like it because it's one of the default typefaces for web applications, but it's not your basic boring Arial, and it's not your basic boring Helvetica. You know, it's kind of a nice um, sans serif font that works on all platforms, all browsers, and clients typically don't complain when we use it. Um, you know, if you try to throw something in there with Arial, clients are like, oh, we don't want boring Arial. So Verdana seems to be a really nice compromise. I think for Din. Um, I just like it, D-I-N. What's it's, it look like? It's uh, very clean, um, architectural, sophisticated, easy to read. Good answer. I use that. I used it a lot on my answers. That I like Verdana. <laughs> I like I like anything that's uh, sans serif. So uh -huh. not fond of the ligatures. Yeah, it's a sans serif. Din, din is a that's sans good. Serif. We'd have to stop working together if if you picked a serif font. <laughs> I think. Um. What we consider before choosing a typeface. Uh, 
One is how are we using the typeface? Is this going to be a large body of text? Is it going to be used for just you know a four or five word heading? What's the size of the text? Is it 10 point, 12 point, 1872? You know, the size and the amount of text really varies what font we're ultimately going to use. Um, based on my previous answer, you know, most body text is Verdana. Um, when we get into headings, um, even as much as I like Verdana, it's still kind of boring for a really large, you know, four or five word heading. When we get into something like that, that's when I will try to use maybe more of an artistic font or maybe a font that has a little bit more weight to it to give the heading and the words a little bit more presence. It's an interesting question. Not a whole lot. You know, I will look at other people's work, Word documents, <laughs> or their <laughs> websites and say, what do I like uh, and what looks best and what looks most professional? And trust someone else's judgment when it comes to that. I think it, it ties into the whole design of the project. At, basically the attitude of the, the uh, the client. Yeah. You, know, you, you kind of try to fit it with their psychological profile that they present to you. Right. As well as so, the type of branding they're wanting to do. Yeah. And usually, you know, when we meet with them initially, if they don't already have set branding in place and they're looking for it or they want to redevelop, we really try to understand them, their business. And it, it really is a whole, you know, I want to say having to do with feelings and, and, and creativity more than than any specific thought process. It's, it's coming to an understanding of their brand. Any technical considerations? Definitely with logos, Chris. Can, you can talk to what fonts you, you know, some script, just won't work in logos. Script fonts don't usually work too well. Because mm -hmm. you have to be, and one thing people forget a lot of times when they're designing interactive, you know, these logos have to be sized up and down uh, and look good at all different sizes and or work. Have, or have op alternative Mm -hmm. you know, or have alternative treatments. So that's a big consideration for interactive design is how's it going to look on this tiny, you know, phone versus over here and, you know, will it register well at all those different sizes? Well, I like to choose, well, okay, it also depends on where it's going to be seen. So studies after study after study has shown that serifs are good for paper, um, but in terms of computer screens, um, sans serifs work best. So most websites nowadays, sans serif is gonna be great for your body copy. For your headlines though, you wanna vary it so you wanna have a nice serif font. Um, so keep that in mind. However, when I give presentations, uh, I always choose a black background for presentations and a white text for the, for the font. And then I like to use a nice large, um, serif, excuse me, serif uh, a font. And frankly, what I like is deja vu serif which is a free open source font, but it's very easy, very readable. It's not very common for most people, so it looks different, stands out. Um, oftentimes though, we just have the designer choose the fonts. What we like to do nowadays is tell the designer, hey, uh, you don't need to choose just for Dana or Georgia. There are other options now out there. In fact, why don't you go to Google Web Fonts or Font Squirrel or the uh, font uh, company Typekit, which Adobe owns now, and go nuts, find a font, and we can embed it in your website as you see fit. 